hello, 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 Lamely. It has been a long time no talk, but I am here. I'm going solo this episode. I'm here for you. I'm going to cover things. We're going to run through the whole Mariah season. And um, we'll we'll sort of cover everything. The be- I'll do the best I can with what I got. Because Mariah has been, of course, on tour. She has been promo, promo, promo. Television show, television show. Interview, interview, interview. Social media, social media, social media. Okay, so she's working. Um, and speaking of working, that is what Martin and I have been doing these past few months. <laughs> Martin is over in New York. He's doing the podcast, the productions, the, all the things over there. And I'm over here in Los Angeles working on my real estate career, as you may know. So if you see me in the neighborhood, knocking on your door, looking in your window, talking about, let me sell your house, that's me. Don't get worried. Don't get worried. It's just me. <laughs> okay. Um, but I didn't want to close out 2023 without covering Mariah. So here I am. Like I said, going solo. So give me a break, y'all. So now that that's covered, I am, uh, we got to go back in time here. This is a little bit of a back in time because we're going back all the way to October. So the last time that uh, we did a podcast episode, we were talking with Andrew Chan, his beautiful, lovely book, Why Mariah Carey Matters, all of that. Love it, love it, love it. If you haven't gotten it yet, go ahead and do that. It's an amazing read. Um, so we got to go back to October now. October is when it started. And if I miss anything, it's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll cover it some other time, but I'm going to do my best. Okay. Um, we're going back to October. Now, the first thing that we sort of seen from Mariah for the holiday season, um, was the children's place ads. So the children's place, I'm assuming this is like a little store for the children and things of that nature. I don't have children. I don't know, but it's a place. And Mariah (laughs) was doing some clothing options, some holiday clothing options um, with the kids, with them them kids. So we got some beautiful items, and they're very nicely priced. Mariah wore this very beautiful red, almost like velvet looking gown, very similar to the one that she wore in Joy to the World. Um, remix video, if you remember that one. It's very similar to that, but very cute. Um, and then the kids were in the pajamas. There's a lot of plaid. There's red. There's green. We are family. Great pictures. Mariah looks stunning in all of these photos. Now, that's the other thing. Honey, we're going to get into some of the fashions that she's been serving a little later on today. Honey, she is giving the fashions. She is giving the hair. She is giving, serving face, serving face, as the children would say. But she looks stunning. She looks gorgeous, beautiful. And that was a cute little thing at the children's place. We loved it. We absolutely loved it. Oh, the photos are so great. The kids look so good. Oh my God, the kids are so grown up. Oh my Lord, I'm loving everything about it. They got like um, little slippers things of that nature. Mariah is snatched in all these photos. I'm so sick of her. Ugh, so sick of her. The next thing that sort of comes onto the scene, the tour announcement. Okay, so the tour announcement, I'm not actually sure when the tour announcement came. Maybe it was in November. Yeah, I think it was November-ish, like top of November. She announced she's going on this tour. She's hitting up everywhere, East Coast, West Coast, and the middle. In the middle, girl, she was hitting up all the places in the middle. What else happened around this time? I'm trying to look at my notes. I took some notes. Oh, 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 this was big. This was big. So Britney Spears, we got to talk about Britney. Britney's over here. She's getting the divorce. She's doing the things. Oh, my God. Speaking of divorce, don't, I got, uh, I can't, I can't talk about it yet. I can't talk about it yet. I'll talk about it later. Um, But Britney's over here and she released her um, autobiography, right? So she released the autobiography, and of course, Brittany is over here showing love to Mariah. Absolutely loved it. Um, she talks about meeting Mariah. I think we've all seen the photo. I think it was like from the Billboard Awards. Um, I could be mistaken, but I think it's the time when she sang I Still Believe on the Billboard Awards. Lambs, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was like a photo from backstage. Um, the two ladies are looking beautiful. I think it was like late 98. I'm going to say that's what it was, late 98. 
Um, but Brittany is so sweet, and she talks about that time going to her dressing room. Um, then she, okay, so she says, quote, I did everything Mariah Carey told me to do, and we took the photo. Of course, she was completely right about everything. The photo looked incredible. I know I won an award that night, but I couldn't even tell you what it was. The perfect photo with Mariah Carey, that was the real prize. Ugh, ugh, Brittany, Brit, Brit, ugh, girl. Oh, girl, we wish her the best. Wish her the best. That was very nice. And the, the book sold like a million, billion, bajillion copies. So everybody's up in here paying respect to Mariah. And I loved it. Gosh, also back in October, we got photos of Mariah at the taping of the Grio Awards. She was, Mariah was honored at the Grio Awards. Now, the show didn't air until November, but she filmed it in October. So we, that we got our first little like glimpses of Mariah. Now, Mariah, again, looking gorgeous, elegant, sophisticated, beautiful. The dress, the black dress, everything. Um, during the show, she had that Chopard butterfly necklace on, if we recall that. I think she had a ring or two as well. Stunning. Stunning with the oh, and you know the straight hair, Mariah. You know the straight hair, Mariah. Honey, when straight hair is there, she's serving it. So we did get some photos from there. We got photos of her with like Al Sharpton and Misty Copeland, who was also honored that night. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And then I think what we did not know when we first got these photos was that um, there were going to be some tributes paid to Mariah, some some vocal tributes. And I mean, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but it wasn't until the Jennifer Hudson show when I found out who was going to be doing what. Now, we got some big names over here. Um, there was Jay Hud. There was Miss Patti LaBelle. And there was Boys to Men and Coco Jones, One Sweet Day. They did a One Sweet Day. Beautiful rendition. Coco Jones has a great voice like it is just so smooth and buttery I think she did a really good job a really good job but then we have to go over to our favorites our favorites Jay Hud and uh, Miss Patty we love them love everything they did the best now I can't say that they were bad but how do I say this I say it, this is what these performances from J. Hud and Patti LaBelle, this is sort of what proves that no matter what type of singer you are, you can be one of the best singers out there. It is very hard to sing a Mariah Carey song. It's just very hard. I mean, Simon Cowell said it years and years ago, like to sing a Mariah Carey song is like vocal suicide. In order to do it, in order to do a Mariah song, you sort of have to turn it into your own song because there's no way that you can like match what Mariah does. And it's not even just about the whistle tones or anything. It's about everything. It's about the emotion in the song. It's about the vocals, you, the, the vocal acrobatics that aren't even like in your face. It, the subtlety that Mariah brings to her music is just unmatched. So even though Miss Patty and Jay Hud sang their faces off, they were not my favorite sort of Mariah tributes, okay? Jennifer Hudson did Vision of Love. Great. Love that song. Jay Hud knows the classics. Um, she did a great job, but it's no Mariah Carey. It is definitely not Mariah Carey at the 2005 BET Awards. I'll tell you that. Was not that. Nothing of the sort. And then we had Patti LaBelle. Patti LaBelle did one of my favorite songs, Love Takes Time. Now, I love Love Takes Time, but it didn't really do much for me. I, but what I loved about that particular performance was that Mariah loved Patti's version of it. Like, Mariah stood up, the whole, you know, standing ovation. She went up to the stage, praised Miss Patti, praised Miss Patti, all of that. Like, so that's what I loved about that. I love that Mariah loved it. And that's, that's, that's about it right there. <laughs> but I loved it. It was good. And it's, it's good to see Mariah getting appreciated at things. Now, the Griot Awards, I honestly have never heard of them before. 
but they celebrate black excellence. So I'm I'm with you. And especially if you're giving Mariah her flowers, I'm with you even more. So y'all better go on with the Grio Awards. I loved it. Um, so that was great. Boom, boom, and boom, honey, right there. What else was happening around these times? Oh, you know what else happened right after that? We got Mariah Carey with Victoria Secret. Like, are you kidding me? Ugh! I loved it. I mean, what? I mean, you know, Mariah loves her lingerie. So, like, we've been waiting for something like this forever. I mean, she used to wear lingerie everywhere she went. Even the daytime talk shows, she was lingerie up, honey. So, we got all kinds of fabulous photos. They did a whole, like, Victoria's Secret spread in their little magazine, and then, like, whatever their gift guide and whatnot. Um, and then, if you go to, like, the Victoria's Secret shops, honey, she's everywhere. They were selling her music in there. They were playing her music. There's huge screens with her. Even in New York was a really good one. Like, um, they have, like, the big, huge banners everywhere. Uh, just Mariah everywhere, all throughout the whole store. Like, she was, like, the spokeswoman for Victoria's Secret Holiday of 2003. Like, that's a that's a gig, honey. That's a good gig. Mariah got paid for that. I know it. I know it. And she looked stunning. Like, everything was super, super cute with all the outfits. But I will say, like, the one, she, there's one where she's in almost like a, a corset, a red corset or bustier. I'm not sure what the ladies call it. But that was my favorite look. Like she, and she was showing just a little bit of stomach, honey. She's snatched. I don't know how she got so snatched, but she is snatched. Allegedly Ozempic. I don't know. Leave me alone. Um, but she looks gorgeous. <laughs> I'm just saying. She looks stunning. And I uh, loved I loved it. Like good, good choice for her to do that with Victoria's Secret. Um, very good collab, if you will. And I looked at all the all the prices for the um, you know, all the lingerie that they were selling. It was very reasonable. Absolute. I mean, I don't know what lingerie goes for nowadays in this economy. But I feel like everything was reasonably priced. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Lady Lambs, but she looked amazing, amazing. Um, so that's sort of how this Christmas season started rolling off. You know, she was here in L.A. She was doing, you know, the collab with that. She was making her appearances, blah, 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 right? But then we get word that Mariah is going to be on the Jimmy Kimmel show, we love a Jimmy Kimmel show. We love a Jimmy Fallon show. We love the Jimmys. So Jimmy Kimmel is actually um, here in Hollywood. He films it. And I live in Hollywood. So I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. How do I get tickets to this? How do I get tickets? Um, and luckily, I did get tickets. But listen to this. So I went on to the – so, like, they do a lot of tickets for these shows through the, the website oneiota.com. And that's how you get the tickets to most of, like, the shows and stuff like that. Like, The View, The Kelly Rippas, the, all of the above, right? So I was like, okay, yeah, they got it posted. Shout out to my lambs who told me about it as soon as they saw it. Thank you. I appreciate it. I immediately signed up for tickets. But One Iota was playing with me, girl. Like, they were playing with me. So, of course, you know, I always have to have a plan B. So I told, like, three of my friends to also sign up for tickets because <laughs> I'm like, well, what if they don't give them to me? So I told my friend here. I told my friend Josh. I told my friend over there. And I told my friend at work. I was like, yes, please sign up for tickets. And if you get them, bring me. And they're like, yeah, of course, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I sign up. They were like, nothing, nothing ghosted me for days. And then my friend Josh, he got he got approved for tickets like the very next morning. And I was like, how are they going to skip over me? Do they know who I am? Uh -huh. How dare they? But anyways, I was okay because Josh got the tickets and I was like, okay, we're going to go. We're going to go. Um, and this was like Mariah's first like big public appearance. So I was like very excited. I'm like, what's going to happen? Good times, good times. Um, it's been a while since I've been to a, like a, a TV taping, though. So I was like, okay, I don't want to wait around forever. I'm already annoyed. What's going on? I was standing in line. 
And, you know, I, I just the, I've never been to anything here in LA with Mariah, right? So this is like my first time, like I don't, normally I know the lay of the land. I know where, when Mariah comes in, I know where she exits, I know when she's coming. I like, I have, I have the map, okay? <laughs> but here in LA, I did not have the map. Even though Jimmy Kimmel's right down the street from me, I had never mapped it out before. So I didn't know what was going on, where she was coming or going, and it was all new to me. So I was like, okay. And when we got there, I was like, oh, I don't know if Mariah's here. It's not looking like Mariah's here. I don't see nobody. I don't hear nobody. So I'm not sure what's happening. So anyways, we get led into the show. We're pretty much on time um, because they do this. These late night shows are pretty much live to tape. So they, you know, do them in the afternoon here in Los Angeles. And then, you know, an hour or two later, it's airing, you know, live to tape in New York. So there's very, to, very, very little to no editing happening. So I'm like, okay, what's happening here? Because this show was supposed to start at like four o'clock. The audience is here. Um, all Jimmy Kimmel's people are over there. Like, what's the little guy's name? Guillermo. Guillermo's there. We got the man in the crowd warming up the audience. I was like, oh my God, like, what's happening? What is happening? Because Mariah is the main guest, of course. Um, so, oh, you know what I didn't mention? Okay, I'm going to mention that next. But right before she went on Jimmy Kimmel, she did the it's time thing. Um, so I'll talk about that in a minute because she talks about that on Jimmy Kimmel. But um, I'm like, what's happening here? What's going on? So turns out Mariah is late as can be. She's like a half hour late. And they're like, okay, Mariah's going to be a little late. We're not sure when she's going to get here. But, like, this is just what she does. It's okay. Like, blah, blah, blah. And so what happened was the guy who's doing the audience warm-up, he goes and he points to the person sitting in the farthest left-hand corner of the audience. And he was like, hand the mic to her. We're going we're gonna to literally pass the mic down through the whole audience and everyone's going to introduce themselves and tell something about yourself because we have plenty of time before Mariah comes. And I was like, I thought they were joking, but they were not joking, honey. They started passing that mic around and I was like, girl, if this microphone touches my hands before Mariah gets here, I'm leaving. I am not doing this. I was like, I'm out, girl. I'm, that will be hours. It will be hours. I cannot do it. I cannot do it. And I parked illegally. So I'm like, I got to go, girl. I'm not parked over here on the corner, girl. Uh-uh. Like, no. Uh-uh. 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 But luckily enough, luckily for me uh, <laughs> and everyone else who was there, we only got about, you know, maybe a quarter of the way through the audience, maybe even less. And then Mariah, like, showed up. They're like, Mariah's in the building. And then they're like, well, she has to go through hair and makeup. And they're like, no, 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 she's coming in camera ready. She's coming in camera ready. So, yes, the crowd is cheering and blah, blah, blah. And I see some of her people, like, rolling um, the suitcases through. And then they're, like, rummaging around back there. And then all of a sudden, boom, the show starts. Like, there's nothing. It's just like, okay, she's here, and, like, it's boom. Here we go. And I feel like y'all didn't give time Mariah time to prep or, like, anything like that. So it's just like, boom, we're rolling now. So I, first of all, Mariah, again, looks gorgeous. If you guys are not aware, she has reassembled the team from a few years back. The Wilfredo is the stylist. Christopher is on um, makeup and Dior is on hair. So we got a wonderful team here. And Mariah looks just, uh, I can't even. This little, I think this was a Balmain she was wearing for Jimmy Kimmel with a little coat over the shoulders. Oh my God, she was golden and she was sparkling and she was just gorgeous and everything. It was, it was a cute little interview. So what started was, of course, we have to talk about it's time um, that she did on November 1st and it was genius and it was brilliant. And I think, 
I think they say it broke the internet because it got like over a hundred million views on like Twitter alone, which is one of the most viewed videos. And I also love that Mariah is leaning into the jokes. She's she's in with the jokes. She's in with the comedy. She gets it. Um, Cause they did Mariah sort of breaking out of the ice or the ice melting, super cute. I love that they were using like hair dryers or like steamers to like melt the ice and everything. It was so amazing. I mean, brilliant. Cheers, toast, bravo, Mariah. You did the thing right there. Now in the interview, um, we saw Mariah do like a little skit where she went into Jimmy's house and woke him up. And I'm like, okay, well that was cute because other people have done that. Like I think, I wanna say Adele and like Rihanna maybe. Definitely Rihanna, I can't confirm on the Adele one, but. Um, but that was cute, you know, whatever. <laughs> it was cute. I liked it. Um, and then she talked about a lot of things. I love the, the story about her um, driving and can she drive or can she not drive? She doesn't have a driver's license. Like, I thought that was pretty funny. So it was a good, it was a good appearance, if you ask me. Um... And then briefly after that, you know, Mariah was out in the t out on the town, you know. She's like here in L.A. She's going out to dinner. She's going out with the kids, doing stuff. And there is one, one look that she gave, because we got to talk about the looks that she's serving here. The look, I think it was the day after Jimmy Kimmel. She went out. I think she went to dinner somewhere. I can't, I can't remember. But she is wearing a Givenchy, like gorgeous outfit and it's like she got like the white and black boots with the black mini skirt and the Givenchy um like little bomber jacket and the sunglasses and she got the straight hair but it's back in the ponytail and it's like oh my god that has one of her best looks in years like I'm gagged by it like I have to pull up a picture right now because I need to look at it again because Honey, she she's out here with her boots on these girls' necks, okay? She was giving everything with that look. I was like, is she, this woman is 50-something years uh, young, and she's looking gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, my God, yes, here she is. And she's getting into, like, the van, or what do they call them, the sprinter vans, and she's looking straight at the camera. Oh, my God. She is just stunning. Stunning. Can't get enough. Cannot get enough. I will not get enough. I cannot get enough. Uh 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 uh. Yeah, yeah. She went out to dinner in this outfit. I think she was at Craig's um, LA and she uh, ran into Diane Sawyer. Or not Diane Sawyer. <laughs> Diane Sawyer. I, I said Diane Sawyer because I was watching the Diane Sawyer interview with Whitney just earlier today. <laughs> oh my God, the crack is whack one. Oh Lord, bless our Whitney, bless our Whitney. But Diane Warren um, over at Craig's, I believe it was Craig's over, you know, in West Hollywood area. I think that's what it was. Don't ask me. Don't ask me. Um, okay, so then... Then we have like a bunch of like promo stuff coming around. She's doing a lot of interviews. I remember here in LA, she did um, the KT LA news or something. The news that I normally watch in the morning, like during the day, she did a little thing with them and a cute red dress looking stunning. So she was definitely doing a lot of the promos all around. She did a Good Morning America. Hello, Good Morning America with... Um, Oh, I forget her name, Juju Chan, Juju Chen, um, talking about Christmas and all that kind of stuff. Uh, again, looking stunning and gorgeous. She was all over the place. Um, loved it. Loved everything about it. Absolutely. Now, the next thing we have to talk about of the Mariah 2023 season, which Martin and I had been talking a lot about this recently, is the Mariah Carey Barbie doll. Now, we talked about it, we saw maybe some prototypes of it, and we were not pleased upon first impressions. However, um, the Barbie came out, 
very much as is, maybe like a little bit of better hair. The hair was a little bit sleeker. Um, the legs looked great. I mean, it's a cute Barbie doll. Now, here's the thing. I, did, I have not gotten mine yet, but I will. Like, I, does Barbie go on sale? Because, girl, I'd be waiting for a sale. I need a sale. I need the Barbie sale. Okay? Now, when it first came out, um, it sold out pretty much right away. I think it came out on, like, November, like, 15, 16, 17 or something like that. I couldn't find it anywhere because I was just going to go ahead and get it. But now I'm like, okay, it's cute. I do need my Mariah Barbie, but I need Barbie to go on sale. Do they go on sale after Christmas? Somebody please let me know. Because, uh, you know, when I looked after it sold out, I was looking at sort of like the resale for the doll. And it was like people were selling it for like 150 or like 125 And I was like, oh, I can't do that. 75 is already, it's... It's pushing it. 75 is pushing it. You know what I mean? But like for Mariah, I would. Because it's like, it's an iconic Mariah Barbie. Like, come on, give me a break. I will say I do like the legs on the Barbie. Like how the slit of the goes up towards the hip. And then the leg is out, sort of like bent and very, you know, shiny and beautiful. I do love that. Like they definitely, I would say they definitely got the pose of Mariah right. Um, but I feel like it could have been maybe a little better. I don't know. The hair may be a little bit darker. I don't know. I don't know. But it's a good Barbie. If you haven't gotten one, get one for the nostalgia, at least for the nostalgia. N at least for the nostalgia. Um, and then, okay, so the next thing I think that comes up is mariah out here in the streets with jennifer hudson i think is the next thing that happens if my um if my timeline here is correct you know i had to throw these notes together real quick girl real quick because busy busy very busy busy just like mariah the the holiday season is busy for mariah girl it's busy for me too honey um so i so she made her appearance on the jennifer hudson show now listen to me here don't send me no hate mail. Don't get crazy. But Jennifer Hudson, I don't think she's a talk show host. There is something, I've seen some clips of her show. I've never actually watched it until Mariah appeared. There's just something that, I don't know, is just slightly off-putting from her interviews. Like, they don't flow. I feel like, I feel like her interviews are very, like, um... I guess you could say sort of choppy, sort of like cut cut up a little bit. Like nothing is ever like, there's never like seamless transitions or segues to the next topic. And I'm not going to blame Jennifer for that because I feel like in order to do that, in order to like flow, like you have to be like, you know, like somebody like an Oprah or like a journalist would be able to flow very well or even like a comedian um, like they flow very well because they think on their feet very quickly. Um, and I don't feel like Jennifer has that skill yet, but I love her. She was renewed. Her season's renewed. She's going to be doing it again. And I do love that Jennifer brought Mariah on for an entire hour, all Mariah. It was like the Jennifer Hudson Legends series. And they were praising and loving up on Mariah the whole time. So I cannot... I cannot say nothing bad about that. Cannot. Um, Mariah, again, looked gorgeous. This dress she was wearing, it reminds me of another dress that she wore maybe like in 2016 or 2017, but like it didn't have like all the titties showing and everything. But you know what I mean? Like she was maybe like overseas, maybe in Dubai. Can't recall, but it reminds me of that, but I like this one better because it's more Mariah. It's for more shows that, you know, the cleavage and things. The girls are out. Um, but this is when Jennifer Hudson announced, like, who was going to be doing what songs and who was performing for Mariah at the Grio Award. So I was like, oh, no, now I'm real excited. Um, and then the Grio Awards aired just soon after that. So we love it. We love it. We love it. Um, so that was a good moment. That was a good moment. Now, the other thing that happens right around this time is Mariah films the 
Okay, so the Billboard Awards, okay? We're going on to the Billboard Awards. Mariah, <clears throat> so the Billboard Awards are doing things a little bit different this year. I don't know if they're gonna continue doing it. I don't know if this worked for them, didn't work for them. I'm not sure. So Mariah's getting a special award at the Billboard Awards and everybody who performs for the bill because they don't do it on live TV anymore. Like they don't, it's not like a TV thing. So it was just an online thing. So all the performers just like taped their performances separately. Like, you know, they did their own production of, you know, whatever they were gonna perform. And Mariah, of course, was going to perform All I Want for Christmas is You. And she was receiving a special chart achievement award from the Billboard Awards, which absolutely rightfully so. Like, yes, honey, amen. So that was the next thing that happened, uh, which she looked amazing. She looked lovely. I mean, the hair, gaggy, gaggy. I loved it. She was like almost like a little snow bunny. Um, really, really cute. Very adorable. I love how she came down in the little ski lift. I loved the ice skaters. Uh, the whole thing was beautiful. I mean, she sounded great too. Like that was like, I loved it. Like it was top to bottom, one of the best of the season for sure. Um, it, she looked good. She sounded good. The audience was there. They were all loving it. The ice skaters, the Dem Babies was there. Like, it was like the whole thing. Everything was really, really well done. And, of course, she looked stunning. Again, Wilfredo, Dior, and Christopher Buckle, like, they killed it. They absolutely killed it with this look for the Billboard Awards. The hair, I mean, ugh, the hair alone is just everything. The hair alone is everything. And also with the Billboard Music Awards, um, she was doing a lot of promo for them. So we got a, like a bunch of little clips of Mariah backstage talking about, you know, some of her albums, some of her number ones. Um, you know, she was doing photo shoots with them all in that white ensemble. So she looked amazing, um, perfect for the holiday season. So we loved the whole Billboard Awards moment. Like she gave the acceptance speech, which, which was great. Um, yeah, stunning, stunning. I mean, the, I watched the YouTube video of that like 50 times the, the day it came out, okay? So I was loving it, girl. I think it's like past 6 million views now, which is really good. Of course, that helps um, with the Billboard charts this year. Uh, so we love those moments. Speaking of charts, okay, we are fully in the Mariah season. Mariah season is ending here at the end of the year. Um, so we have a couple extra weeks added to the uh, All I Want for Christmas is You at number one. And, you know, she's at 93 weeks total for number one. I, I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing. No one else is ever going to accomplish this. Like the longevity and the life that All I Want for Christmas is You has, it's unmatched, unmatched, seriously unmatched. No one, no one else will do that. Every year we will always have All I Want for Christmas is You at number one for at least a week or two. This this uh, year, we did have um, that um, rocking around the Christmas tree thing. That went number one for a moment. And then, of course, Mariah came the next week and the week after that. Um, and probably for the final week or the first week of January, she'll also be number one, I think. I'm not sure. We're not there yet. But it doesn't even matter. Like, one or two weeks a year is enough. Like, I'm happy with that. I don't need 20 weeks. I don't need, like, the entire month of December. Like, yeah, that'd be cute, but I don't need it. I just need one. That's it. I'm not, I'm not being greedy. Girl, I'm not being greedy. Just give me one week at number one, preferably, like, the Christmas week. But whatever. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, so then after the Billboard Awards, um, pretty much the tour starts. So the tour starts sort of early this year, but I guess you know you got to get it in. Uh, so the tour kicked off here in Los Angeles. Um, she did the Hollywood Bowl, which was a 
phenomenal. Love a Hollywood Bowl moment. Now, me personally, I had a little bit of a fiasco. Because, again, I don't know the lay of the land over here in Los Angeles. <laughs> it's sort of like I'm doing it all new here. Now, I've been to the Hollywood Bowl before. But I was like, okay, you know, I'm not paying these ticket prices, first of all. Okay? I'm at the, she better quit playing. She better quit playing because I'm not spending all that money. No. Like, I've seen Mariah on a million tours. I've seen a million of the Christmas tours. If she's going to be charging $1,500, then she can, she can have me not come to the show because that's what's going to happen. I'm not paying that. I'm sorry. That's just me. Like, even if I, like, could afford that, I don't – I would not. I could not. Like, that's just outrageous to me. Like, I remember, you know, my very first Mariah concert, I think, cost me, like, $100. And I, it was at the United Center in Chicago, Rainbow Tour, March 25th, 2000. Holla. But – like now, you know, and I wasn't even sitting that close. I was like at the end of like the floor, but it was a perfect, perfectly great seat for me. And nowadays it's like, I feel like I'm never going to go to a concert again, like, or, or a big name concert again, because the ticket prices are outrageous. I can't go to uh, uh, Beyonce. I can't go to Taylor Swift. And I certainly cannot go to Mariah for those prices, because here's the other thing. Like, uh, I can't like sit all the way in the back for a Mariah show. Well, I say that now, but I ended up sitting way in the back. But it was because it was last minute because I was done dirty about the whole ticket situation. Ugh. But anyways, so here's the thing. She was opening um, here in Los Angeles, Hollywood Bowl, and she was doing a Friday night show, and then she was she added a uh, Sunday night show. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get tickets for the second show because, you know, because it's also like you got to give Mariah a couple of days into the, into the tour for her to, like, be warmed up and, like, feel, like, very, you know, comfortable on stage. So I was like, it's okay. I'll go to the second Los Angeles show. So then, like, everyone I know in Los Angeles, they're not even, like, big lambs, they, but they were, like, friends of mine. They're like, oh, I want to go. Oh, let's go. We should go. We should go. And I was like, okay, okay. But I have to wait until tickets, like, you know, I'd like to buy them, like, right before because they always release new tickets. And, like, again, I'm not spending $100 million. So we have to wait. Long story short, I ended up going by myself very last minute. And by last minute, I mean like I bought my ticket like two hours, not even two hours, an hour and a half before the show started. Because like the day before the show, like on Saturday, they had released a ton of tickets uh, for the show at $75 because they were only single seat tickets. They were single seat tickets. So that's, that's what ended up happening. Um, so I was like, again, that's why you wait and then you go by yourself and then you get a cheap ticket, but it was like all the way in the back, but it's like, okay, whatever, I'll go for $75, like boom, done. So that's what ended up happening. It was very like, you know, the show was great. Um, I was sitting far back, but like I could see, you know, the, the screens were great. It was very, the, the stage production for this tour was very, um, clean, clean lines, very simple and subdued, which I think at first I was like, oh, this is sort of like not that it's not that great because like there's nothing going on. Like the stage is sort of almost empty, but then like as like the tour went on and I saw more and more of the um, shows, I was like, oh, actually I sort of do like this because it's, it's a little bit more adult. You know, it's not like, and it's not too Christmassy because if it gets too Christmassy, I'm like, ugh, because I don't like Christmas like that. Um, also, as I'm looking through my notes here, I, I made a mistake. She did not open up at Los Angeles Hollywood Bowl. She opened up in at the Yamava Theater over there, which is way over there. So that's where she first opened up the show. So that was like night one. Um, and we're going to talk about that in just a second because I got some words for night one. Um, but yeah, so it was just, it was a nice, clean stage, and I think it worked, because it was more subtle, like I said, so it ended up growing on me, it grew on me, 
at first I was like, no. But then like later on in the tour, there were other things that were sort of added. Like, like when she came out for All I Want for Christmas, she came out on the little train, which is really cute because at first I was like, why? Because when the show opens, when the show opens, she's like coming out, like the entrance wasn't that great, I didn't think. But she came out like in like whatever, the box of a present, which is sort of like lackluster, like boring. But then at other shows, she was like lifted from the bottom, which is cute. Love it. So I guess it just depends on where she was performing and what capabilities they had. But I also was like, why is she, why, why did they have bellboys? Like, who is she going to the hotel? Like, what is this scene? What's this scene? I'm not sure what this scene is. But then like at the end, when you do see the train come out, now you're like, oh, because also on the screen, they're like, it's like a train, there's train tracks or something happening. I was like, oh, I get it. Now I get it. Like, she's supposed to be like on the, you know, train to Christmas land or something. I don't know, to North Pole. So like now it makes sense. But before I was very confused about what the bellboys were doing, but they're not bellboys. They're more like train ushers or whatever those people are called, the caboosers. I don't know. So I was like, okay, I get it, I get it. Um, but So overall, very cute. I love that she did change up the set because, again, like you have to keep some sort of freshness in there. It's like I love the Christmas tree and all that kind of stuff and blah, blah, blah from the past many, many years, but perfect timing to switch it up. So good for her. Now, back to the actual opening night of the tour, which was at Yamava. Girl, I was, I w listen, I was loving everything I saw. Everything was great. Set list, amazing. She gave us moments in the set list. We'll talk about the set list a little later. But let's just talk about the costumes. Glorious costumes. I love the little candy cane, sort of red, uh, stiff dress. I don't know what you would call that, but it's a stiff dress and it worked. Then she has like the crown and things. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And then when she gets to the part where she's doing the medley of all the songs, I don't know what this woman was thinking and I certainly don't know what Wilfredo, the stylist was thinking because at Yamava, she came out in this red dress that was, I, 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 <clears throat> I mean, I am still gagged over the atrocity of that dress. I will never get over this dress. Like, it is one of the worst dresses she has ever... I don't know what was happening. Maybe there was wardrobe malfunctionings. This was like... a. First of all, this dress should have never even been in the closet. Y'all should have left that at home. Whoever made that dress should have never made that dress. I'm sorry, but that is just my opinion. I mean, I can't make a dress, so who am I to say? I get it, but that dress is not right, and it's not okay. Because she looked like, uh, she, looked like she was on a couch. What is that? Like, honestly, I'm, 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 I have PTSD from the first time I saw it now because I'm, like, I'm getting heated. I'm getting real heated now. When I first saw that dress on the YouTubes and, you know, all the live feeds, I thought, I literally, I'm not even kidding you. I was like, oh, this must be some sort of a gag or a stunt. She's about to stunt us. She's a stunting queen. And the kids are going to come out of the side of the dress. Like, they're going to, like, you know, they're, like, I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're going to pop out from underneath the dress. The kids are. Moroccan and row. Rock and row. And they pop out of the dress. And I'm like, I don't know what that is, but it's okay because I guess it's, it's show business. But the kids never popped out. And then she was walking around, and I was like, is she serious? Oh, they're, they're serious here? Oh, my God. No, 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 ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Absolutely not. I'm sorry, but absolutely not. I wish everyone well who was involved in making that dress, choosing that dress, and whoever brought that dress on tour, no ma'am. But I'm done with that. Done with that because I think it was after the very first show, um, by the time she got to the Hollywood Bowl, there was a little bit of a write-up in Vogue about a dress that she was supposed to wear on the tour. And it was this beautiful, 
um, rose gold, sort of one piece, sparkly, shiny thing. And they had pictures of her like um, with the designer doing fittings. And I was like, oh my God, like where is that dress? How is she gonna come out with that couch dress And she has this rose gold dress sitting in the backstage. So there must have been some sort of a problem with the wardrobe at the time. So I'm like, okay, all right. Hopefully we will not see any more of that red dress. And thank God we did not. So, I mean, we're we're just going to move on from it. And we're going to try our best to forget it. Because by the time she was at the uh, Hollywood Bowl, she was wearing the dress from the Vogue right up. Gorgeous, stunning, loved it, loved everything about it. All of it, top to bottom, the hair, everything. Perfect dress for that. Like she did the whole, and she, of course she did all the good songs, boom, 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 all the, all the hits. Um, but there were a couple moments in the tour where she went, um, she sort of surprised us with some things on the set list. So number one, we have Sleigh Ride, which is cute, love that, which we had from the CBS special last year, I know. But now that looks like it's gonna be a permanent part of the show, so that's great. Um, We did have a duet with her and Monroe, Jesus born on this day. Oh my God, how cute, how adorable, how everything, like uh, spectacular. And honey, you know, she's putting these kids to work, honey. She ain't even playing. She's like, you gonna come on tour? You bet, honey, you're gonna pay, pay your way. You better be paying your way. Okay. So they're out here doing what they do, and it's so cute. I love seeing the kids. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of the kids on stage, but now that they're a little older, I think it's, it's, it's getting a little cuter because they're sort of like giving their own personality to the show, and I think it was so great. So I love that she came out and did that song with uh, Monroe, and then we got a little bit of the Christmas wrapping song, the Christmas wrapping paper song with Monroe from the CBS special. So I love that that's in there. So Monroe did her part there. And then Rocky was on the drums. Oh my God. Hello. Can we talk about that for a minute? Amazing. I loved it. I loved that whole thing. That was a cute moment. The kids out there on their own doing their thing while their mama's back there putting on a couch dress. But hey, it is what it is. Um, but then, um, for Here Comes Santa Claus, I believe it is, Rocky came out and did a little rap and whatnot. I was like, okay, look at him. I'm, I'm so proud of the kids on this tour. I really am. I think they did a phenomenal job. Like, they really held it down. And that's why I like it, because, like, you see, you, you're seeing who they are. Not They're not just, like, making an appearance, and they're little kids, and they're just, like, you know blah, blah, blah. They're, they're like showing themselves and I really like it. So that was very cute, very adorable. Um, so also on the set list is a one child moment. Can we, uh, can we praise that? Praise amen. Yes, ma'am. Love one child. And then she did some snippets here and there, um, from other random things. Uh, so we, we like that. And then, like, I think she did, like, an All I Live For moment and stuff. And then, like, oh, and then in in New York at the first show on the 9th, Jay Hud and Ariana Grande came out. They had their moment. Love, love, loved it. Loved everything about it. Very cute. Um, who, oh, and then, like, then she brought out Busta Rhymes for the second New York City show. And she did I Know What You Want. So we love that moment as well. I was definitely not expecting that one at the Christmas, but we'll take it because people know that song and they love that song. That's sort of like, you know, a classic for the general public, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's a general public classic. Um, other other notable moments at the at the tour are some of the celebrities that came out, especially here in Los Angeles. Girl everybody was out at the Mariah shows, okay? 
everybody. We know our good girl, Heidi Klum. She's a Mariah Lamb. She's a stan. I remember her back at the Mia and Mariah uh, Today Show performance. She was like right over there. She was bopping out. Um, so she went to the show looking gorgeous and stunning. Of course, all the Kardashians were there with um, their brood of, of people. We liked that. Um, who else was showing up? I can't even remember at this point. Oh, Carrie Washington, who we love. You know, they're good, good girls. Um, who else? Let me, uh, now I, I should have written these things down, but now I'm like pulling it up off the top of my head. Um, Los Angeles, Los Angeles was, oh, um, what is her name? She's not Paris Hilton. She's the other girl. She is Nicole Richie. <laughs> Who is Nicole Richie? <laughs> she was also there. I think Miley Cyrus was there. Um, I just think there was so many, like everybody in LA was there. Like it was a good thing. Like even like at the restaurant um, that first night where I didn't go, like everyone who was in the restaurant was going to Mariah that night. Like everybody was dressed up. The lambs were all out. They were all out and about doing their thing. So we loved those moments. Um, what else is going on? Um, I'm trying to remember. What am I forgetting? Because I'm at the end of my list over here, y'all. What's happening? What am I forgetting? I know there's something. I know there's something I'm missing. Oh, you know what I'm missing? It's over here back in the uh, promotional area, the promotion of the year. Um, she did like a whole spread with People Magazine, Gorgeous photos. People Magazine did a spread on her. Hello. Gorgeous. The one of her in the red dress. She has like this, oh, it, it reminds me of like a stance from like the whole pose is very like Emancipation of Mimi. It like has attitude with it. She's like in the red dress and oh, stunning. Go like that's how I love to see Mariah. Like she has like the legs, the stand, the, it's just, it, there's femininity here, especially with this gorgeous dress. And then there's also like a little bit of power behind it, you know? Like, does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. I hope it does. Because I was loving every moment, every, every, every moment, every moment. Um, okay, so, oh, the other thing that happened. Oh, it's almost towards the end of the tour, but we got to talk about it. Um, it is Mariah went to the White House, honey. Mariah went to the White House. Ah! I can't even. I can't even. Cannot even. Okay, so earlier in the year, we, of course, reported on Mariah being inducted into the National Recording Registry at the Library of Congress, which is like a huge accomplishment. Not everybody has that. Huge accomplishment. Um, so we knew that. However, when she was over there on the East Coast during the tour, she was invited to the Library of Congress. And they, like, had, like, a whole spread. And they were showing her the things. They were giving her the tour um, and everything. And, like, Mariah was at the tree taking the photos and everything. It was, like, super, super cute. And I was like, oh, look at Mariah in the library, honey, in the library. Uh, there was Santa Claus. Again, she looks gorgeous. I think she's wearing, like, a sparkly Chanel, I'm going to say. But don't hate me if I'm wrong. But very good. And they were like, they had like, see, somebody was doing their research and their homework over there at the Library of Congress because they were talking about uh, Call the Wind Mariah from Paint Your Wagon, which is like where her mother got the name Mariah. You know what I mean? So I'm like, look at these people doing their research over there. Oh, my God. Loved it. Mariah looked gorgeous. Sophisticated, beautiful. Can't get enough of it. But then um, she went and did the White House. And she met Joe Biden and um, Kamala Harris and all the people over there. Oh, my God. So good. There was a little video about it. Mariah posted pictures. She brought the kids. Oh, my Lord. I loved it. I loved it. I loved how Joe Biden was like, 
oh, I'm a fan. And Mariah's like, I'm a fan. And then, like, he pulls out his phone and plays All I Want for Christmas. <laughs> and then he's like, come on, guys. I'm like that. He's, like, giving, like, a grandpa attitude. And I'm just, I'm, I can't be mad about it. But I feel like, I feel like it was, like, grandpa excited <laughs> to see, like, his daughter and the grandkids come over. And he's like, come on, guys. We're going to go do some fun stuff. <laughs> It's so funny. I don't know why that's funny to me, but totally funny. Funny and cute at the same time. Like, I just, it was great to see Mariah up in the White House because it's been some time. It has been some time. Like, I don't think she was there for the Obama administration. I think maybe last time she was there was the Clintons, which would make sense. I mean, you know, but don't get me if she's been there since. I don't know. I don't know. Everybody, we love everybody. Um, I just love that moment. It's super cute, and uh, you don't always see Mariah doing things like that. So she was really out here. She's really out here doing stuff um, this whole Christmas season. It really was Mariah's season. She covered the whole nation with the Christmas tour. She was doing all the promo, all the press, the Victoria's Secret, uh, the People magazine, all the great photos, oh my God, the it's time viral moments, the tour ensembles, good and bad, <laughs> good and bad. And she did a ton of social media stuff too. Like the video where she announced the tour was super cute. She's like on the phone with Santa, writing down all the stops. She looked wonderful. Um, it was all the behind the scenes. Can we talk a little bit about the behind the scenes videos that she did for the tour? Like, I loved it because you really did get to see. And then she did like a behind the scenes music video for All I Want. I mean, girl. Oh, and it looks like there's professional footage from every stop along the way. I'm like, girl, what's going on here? Somebody has some money. She's rich. She's very rich. <laughs> um, so it was a great success for the whole tour. Also, the other thing she was doing was she was giving away front row tickets to Lambs, um, like on Twitter. Again, generous, too generous. I loved everything she was doing. I know some lambs out there that I know got them. And shout out to y'all. Very fun, very festive. We loved everything about it. Um, so, okay, so that pretty much covers... I know I missed some things. I'm sure I did. But that pretty much covers everything um, except for two more things. We got Mariah in Aspen and we got... The breakup of her and Brian Tanaka. May we have a moment of silence, please? Okay. Let's start with the breakup, and then we'll go to the good moments. So, again, Martin and I have sort of been um, hinting at this or have sort of been noticing the absence of Brian and, you know, for seven years, they were always together. They were always doing things. Last time we saw Brian, I think, was at the Vegas uh, moment. Uh, whatever that was, I forgot what it's called, but he was there. Um, and then we never saw of him again, and that was in May. And prior to that, we had only saw him, we'd only seen him, at um, Mariah's birthday when they were over there on the yacht and uh, he was shirtless kissing on her. I remember that. I'll always remember that. Can't nobody, can't nobody take that away. I will remember that. Oh, so cute. Um, so I guess, I mean, it is official because we haven't been seeing him around. Again, another moment of silence. I just have to take a deep breath. I have to because I just loved Brian. I mean, he's so cute and he seems so nice. And they, uh, they seemed like they were having just a good time together. And like he loved the kids and all of this and all of that and all of the other stuff. Ugh. And then we haven't seen him on like Instagram or anything for a while. 
So everybody was very suspicious, very suspicious. But um, just a few days ago, he, I mean, I don't know. Maybe some people think this is odd that he like made an official announcement. But I don't think, it doesn't seem odd to me. I mean, I feel like people have been asking him for months probably about this, you know? So, and now it's Christmas time and he's not there. So it's like people really know that something's up because he's not there. So I feel like this just is sort of like putting an end to that. Because, you know, here's the thing. Mariah's not going to talk about it. Mariah will never mention this. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think this is going to be in, you know, her future press interviews. Like, I don't think they're going to be asking her about this. So I feel like this is the best we're going to get. And I feel also that I'm sure he checked with Mariah before he posted this. Because I'm sure they're still sort of on maybe, hopefully, like some sort of friendly terms maybe because it's been a few months now and it's like, okay, so maybe like the heartache is a little less or whatever. And so like maybe, you know, maybe he asked her if he could post this because he's sick of people asking him about it. But anyways, what he posted was, I'll read just a little bit of it or maybe I'll read all of it because I was just like, oh, I can't. (laughs) He says, Dear friends and fans, with mixed emotions, I share this personal update regarding my amicable separation from Mariah Carey after seven extraordinary years together. Our decision to embark on different paths is mutual, and as we navigate these separate journeys, we do so with profound respect and an overwhelming sense of gratitude for the invaluable time we've shared. The memories we've created and the artistic collaborations are etched in my heart forever. Uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, I can't. Mariah's dedication to her family and her commitment to her craft have inspired us during our shared journey. I want to express my love and appreciation for Mariah and her incredible children, whose warmth and kindness have enriched my life in ways words cannot capture. Not him bringing up the kids. Because oh. <laughs> think about it. Like the kids, they've, they've really, they've probably lived with Brian Tanaka longer than they lived with their own daddy. You know what I mean? Uh, It's seven years. Oh, my gosh. Okay, he goes on to say, I'm just going to read it all at this point. During this sensitive time, I kindly ask you for your understanding, privacy, and respect. The outpouring of love and support from fans has been a beacon of strength, and I'm extraordinarily grateful for the encouragement that continues to uplift me. I eagerly anticipate continuing my journey, knowing my passion for inspiration, dance, and the creative arts will resonate in the unfolding chapters. With much love and gratitude, Brian Tanaka. Oh, my Brian Tanaka. I can't believe it. I can't believe it, but I feel like that's a sweet message and it does sort of like end all of the speculation and it's just like the ending of 2003 and we can go into 2004 fresh, excited, and looking for future opportunities, you know, but I just don't know, like, I don't know what happened there. I don't know. I mean, of course, there there have been all the rumors about him wanting children and Mariah's over the children phase because, you know, he's a little younger than her or like those other rumors where, um, you know, there was like maybe like I don't know, a a dislike between him and Nick Cannon or an animosity or something like that, which I don't know. Don't quote me. But it is just sort of sad because I feel like they made a great, cute couple and they always looked good together and he always seemed so sweet to her and the kids. So it's just, it's a little disappointing, but we have, we have the word now. It's official. And, um, we can all let our hearts heal. Well, mine, at least. (laughs) We'll move on. We will move on and things will be okay. Um, So there's that. The other thing I guess that we have to talk about is, of course, her annual trip to Aspen. Now she 
always goes to Aspen, as we know, and I want to say she always rents the same house. The house looks the same as it always does. Because I don't know. There's something about it. I think she rents the same house all the time, but I could be wrong. But she's been giving us a lot of social media moments, and even more so, she's been giving us a lot of looks. She has been out on the town in Aspen. She has been shopping. She has been giving the photographs. She has been giving everybody what they need. She looks gorgeous. She looks gorgeous. Um, I think now, hold on now. I think, um, I, you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to pull up all the pictures of the ensembles and go through them one by one is what I'm going to have to do because she really gave us so many looks. It's almost going to be hard to like keep track of everything. So, um, I'm going to pull that up right now. You see how unprepared I am? How, how dare I? How dare I? Okay, I got to go back a little bit, honey. Oh, because she was giving and doing the most. Okay, all right. So I think the first time we see her in Aspen, I believe, is Christmas Eve. And I think it's, um, I think she posted something. Yes, it was December 24th. She posted it, a sleigh ride with the kids. Now, in this first picture right here, she's in like this red, uh, what do I call this? A, a coat or a draped coat. And she has her hair snatched up in the pony with like the side bang and the curls coming. Stunning, stunning. It reminds me of her Rockefeller Center a performance of All I Want for Christmas is You when she was uh, pregnant with the kids. Oh, it wasn't All I Want for Christmas is You. It was Oh Santa when she was pregnant with the kids. Gorgeous. She, uh, it, oh, it also reminds me of that one time in 2005 when she went to the Wendy Williams show and, when, and then she went to like a dinner afterwards and she met Tommy Mottola and she was wearing all white and she had her hair snatched up in a ponytail just like this. I mean, oh my God. Gorgeous. And then she's wearing like these lace gloves. Stunning. I mean, sophisticated, elegance, opulence. The bitch is rich. That's all I got to say there. Now, I, I will say she has been um, wearing a certain necklace uh, recently from one era of um, the past, which I refer to as the nightmare era. But listen, I'm sure that necklace cost a pretty penny, so she's got to put it to use, but it is a little off-putting, and I will be talking to my therapist about this situation, so it'll be okay. <laughs> I just don't like to go back there often. Don't like to go back there. Um, but then she also, of course, she posts photos from Christmas Day. She's wearing, like, this great sparkly gown um, with the kids. Everybody looks happy. Um, she has Sean, her nephew, there. You know, the nephew just had a baby, so now the nephew has two kids. And they call her Auntie Raya. Oh, my God, how adorable. But Mariah's over here walking around the house in this, like, sequin gown with, like, a girl with a ruby necklace. That ruby necklace has got to be, like, I want to know how much that ruby necklace is. Because, you know, rubies are expensive. But she's been wearing that necklace for years. I think she got it around the Nick Cannon era. Um, but that is one of her favorite pieces, apparently. Now, that looks gorgeous on her. Uh, so we do love that. Some of the looks that she's been serving on the streets of Aspen because, again, the wardrobe is wardrobing, and as the kids like to say on Twitter, she is mother, mothering, mother, mother. That's what everybody says, right? But there, I'll just go through some of my favorites because I know y'all are probably sick of this episode already. Um, I'll uh, give you some of my favorites here. Now, she's been looking gorgeous. One of the first ensembles we saw of her in um, 
Aspen was again very similar to the Billboard Music Awards. It was an all white sort of ski bunny thing, but it wasn't the same because the one for the Billboard Awards was like more bedazzled, like on the skirt and whatnot. And I also think the boots are different, but I don't, I'm not, yeah, the boots are definitely different. She's wearing a coat, but she looks stunning. Love it. Mariah in white. Yes. Then she was out and about in like a, another Chanel ensemble, almost like a sweater skirt. And she has the scarf, the glasses, the Chanel uh, earmuffs. Ah, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous. She gave us almost like um, another look where it was more silver. And it looks like, um, I guess like this would be like a ski suit maybe. I'm not a skier, nor have I ever been, but I think this is what you would wear if you were like Mariah or Gwyneth Paltrow on the ski slopes, I think. Um, so it's like all silver, body fitting, and she's wearing a coat over it, the glasses. Honey, she's serving. She's serving. She is serving. Um, but I think... I think one of my favorite looks from Aspen, she, oh, she also wore another one where she had like this pink furry coat. That was a cute one. But I think the, my favorite is this other Chanel ensemble. Girl, I mean, Mariah with the straight hair. She does it for me. She does it for me. This was a couple days before Christmas. She was wearing uh, skin tight sequin pants. I'm going to say maybe some Louis Vuitton boots. She has a fluffy, like, vest on and a Chanel, a, like, um, a, I don't know what you call that, a hat <laughs> or a beanie or, like, something. I don't know. I don't know. But, like, you know, one of those hat things, like a hat. <laughs> it's very hat-like. <laughs> but she just looks, again, she looks like she's, like, there's femininity here, but there's also, like, this, like, edge to it you know like she like has some sort of like like she's a fashionista like it's very fashion like all of her looks in Aspen are very fashion very fashion forward very like you know straight from the runway very styled very nicely the hair is great she's been doing a lot of like updos for the Christmas oh man she just looks absolutely stunning these are some of the best Aspen looks she's had in quite some time. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Lambs. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Um, but these are just all the looks, all the looks. Other Every look she has served this season, this Mariah season, other than that red couch dress, everything else has been impeccable. Like, really impeccable. Like, I can't even, like, I can't even pick it apart because it's top to bottom, great. All of it, all of it, absolutely all of it. So cheers to you, Mariah. You really closed out this year as like on a high. We've all been loving it. You gave the lambs everything you wanted. Look at me acting like she's listening or something. <laughs> sure. But anyways, um, before I wrap things up, I want to uh, let everyone know that we will be doing a uh, 2003 wrap-up show like we always do. It's just going to come in the new year. It, listen, we don't have anything else going on in January, so we may as well you know, talk a little bit more about these moments she's given us because I just did a real quick like, gloss over everything. But... A year-end episode is always lamely inclusive. So what I would love and enjoy for you guys to do is send in your comments, your questions, your concerns, all of the above for anything that you've loved from this past year. It can be from the tour. Like, tell us what show you went to. What did you love? What outfits do you love? What moments from uh, Twitter or Instagram are your favorites? Uh, just anything and everything, like just let us know because we want to hear from you. So what you can do is obviously you can email us, Report at gmail.com. You can DM us um, at uh, Instagram or Twitter, uh, the Mariah Report. You can also um, email us voice memos. Uh, like from your phone, just record what you want uh, and send it over. You can send us videos that way as well. Um, 
And you can also call our voicemail, which the number is in the description below. So definitely do that. We'll, we'll probably gather these over the next week and a half. And then we'll do sort of a 2023 wrap up in 2024, but that's okay because I'm sure Mariah will still be number one when we do the episode. So it's okay if it goes over a little bit, right? Can't be mad about that. Um, but I want to, on behalf of Martin and myself, I want to thank all of the listeners for all of the support over the years, um, all the fun moments we have had, um, and just everything. You guys have been great. We love doing this. And thank you so much for your patience at the end of this year and understanding and because we really appreciate it and we aren't going anywhere we will be back um, i'm sure mariah is going to be off for most of the beginning of 2004 but we'll be reporting things don't you worry we are going nowhere um, but that's going to be it for me here at the mariah report thank you for listening and we love and enjoy ya. Happy New Year. <laughs>